Ah, okay. Uh, very good. So you can see my name isn't on the slide. I've addressed this uh, uh, community probably uh, most of the last 20 years. So I'm going to let the uh, new faces in my group do the presentation here. Um, but I will do one thing, and, and that's introduce them and set the context for the work that they've been doing. So um, the EHT Science Gateway team consists of these five people. There's myself and C.K. Chan, who are the PI, co-PI, um, and then the people who are doing the, the real work, uh, Essen Gakpinar Shelton and June Wang, and then Andrew West is also uh, a, a postdoc who has been our user model uh, going in here. So this is the uh, team, and you'll hear more from them, but um, I wanted to quickly set the context of, of what we're doing here, and I need the mouse. Uh, before I start this video, um, I, I was looking at this on my screen at the hotel room last night, and it was a, a few inches wide. I, th I thought, oh, it'll look great up here. We'll get several feet uh, across. Um, and then I decided, let me look to see what this is in, in reality. And the M87 black hole is actually 24 billion miles in diameter. So uh, going from an inch to a few feet. Uh, um, but so what you're looking at here is a simulation of the M87 I can start the video. Maybe. Okay. Ah, there we go. So um, uh, the EHT is an international collaboration aimed uh, at capturing the first horizon scale images of black holes. It combines multiple radio telescopes uh, around the world to create very high resolution inferometry, inferometry arrays. And by using these eight telescopes uh, located internationally, uh, they were able to resolve the supermassive black holes at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, and then this one at the center of the M87 uh, galaxy. Then uh, using the OSG already, they have created the largest black hole simulation library to date. This is over a million images in this library. Uh, they then take the uh, images in this library, compare them to observations to learn things about, um, about the black holes, such as the plasma temperature around the black hole, the magnetic fields, and other, uh, other important uh, properties of black holes. Uh, they also were able to show that Einstein's theory of uh, general theory of relativity is correct in extreme gravities. Um, however, and this is the uh, where the problem comes in. Very few of the researchers at EHT can actually uh, start runs within the OSG, leading to us considering why a science gateway might be the right way to go and to increase the number of people who can use the you uh, uh, can submit uh, uh, new jobs. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Essen and let her take you on from there. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so let me share some of the objectives we have in mind um, since the inception of this, this project and what we've been working on over the past year. So our, our foremost goal in this project has been to develop a gateway specifically centered around the needs of the users um, within the EHD community. And to do this effectively, we also recognize the technical obstacles associated with leveraging high throughput computing resources within uh, the Apache Arvada framework. And so we've been actively addressing some of these concerns. And lastly, we aim to expand uh, our impact, the impact of our, our project um, by connecting more with the, um, with the astronomy research community who who are directly benefiting from this type of work, but at the same time, a larger uh, technology community um, that supports research out, uh, efforts um, as, as such. So um, to support our objectives, uh, our journey has began with um, a UX research. Um, and what I mean by UX research is we specifically adopted from the double diamond design process in this, in this project. Um, for those who may not be familiar uh, with this specific framework, uh, it is a very commonly adopted framework in, in product development and system development design. Um, so what, what this framework calls for is rather than jumping straight to a solution, um, it really um, encourages us to um, explore, uh, thoroughly explore the, the problem space. So um, we, we diverge 
um, and gather as, mu as, mu as much information as possible about the users, uh, their pain points, their needs, their desires, uh, their context, what type of con constrictions, restrictions they may have. Um, and then from there, we would um, we would start to understand their user journey, and we would um, until we pinpoint the specific uh, problem that we are dealing with, the users are dealing with, and then we would diverge again. We wouldn't um, directly jump into a solution, uh, but we would again diverge to consider all the possible solutions, um, including our users and, and all the stakeholders into the process, uh, gathering their feedback uh, until we find the most uh, optimum solution. Uh, for their uh, problems, considering um, the, the the time, the funding conditions, and um, and all the other uh, restrictions. So in our case, um, to achieve this, we use several research methods, including heuristic analysis of the existing platform um, that was actually designed uh, um, through a pilot study um, that conducted in 2022. Um, and then we did a lot of observations of the EHT scientists and their workflow. We really wanted to understand how they use the HD Condor environment um, when they submit jobs, what they do, and in what environment they actually use these resources. And also conducted some semi-structured uh, interviews, uh, casual conversations, informal conversations with them to understand, to better understand their needs and the, the challenges that they are going through. I'm not going to bore you with the, the details of the research, um, but I want to share with you some of the, the findings. So as a result, um, we identified three primary user groups within the EHD um, community who would benefit uh, from using uh, OSG high throughput computing resources. Um, and among this group, we have experienced researchers and professors. We have less experienced researchers, and we also have um, students. Some of these users are already using and benefiting from OSG resources, but um, others have not yet adopted it. And to give you a little bit more information about each group. So when I say experienced scientists, what I mean is um, we're talking about this group who are actually skilled at creating uh, and using scientific software. They are very comfortable working within the HD Condor environment, submitting their jobs and analyzing uh, the output, the, all the images. Um, however, they are still looking for a platform um, for an efficient way of managing their work. They still want a, a gateway, a platform that would bring various tools together for them to easily monitor their tasks and the problems, diagnose the problems um, during the, the, um, the runtime. So, um, and then the next group, which is our actually primary group, less experienced users, these users are also professional astronomers, but they may not have actually run um, simulations before. So they, they would prefer, because they also do not have time to learn new tools. Um, so they would prefer using um, tools that would come pre-configured uh, and are ready to use with uh, minimal setup. Uh, so that you know they can really just concentrate on their research uh, they don't need to learn new things, new tools, new technology, um, and so they can um, uh, really contribute to the scientific community without uh, being bogged down by the technical hur hurdles. And then finally, we have the students. Um, this is the education aspect of this, this project, and EHD is really big on this. Uh, they really want a platform uh, that could benefit the students uh, who are the next generation of scientists. And so these users often, we know that they have limited uh, coding skills. Uh, and so for them specifically, the Science Gateway will offer them a, a one a one shop, a user-friendly platform that they can find um, documentation, they can run uh, workflows, they can visualize results, and they can actually learn and understand the research process more effectively. Once we identified the user types, the next thing we did was to identify the uh, the use cases for each groups. So what we found is um, because you know as these use cases may vary from one application to another, from one group to another. So we really wanted to understand how these these group of people um, for each group how they use um, HD Condor environment or how they, how they would benefit from the OSG um, resources. 
So the first type, we basically found out two main types of uh, submission, um, commonly um, available, commonly used uh, for these scientists. The first type is the exploratory search. Um, here, scientists, they are, this is what they call as a tensile model. They are interested in inputting various values for various parameters. Um, they do, they want to run simulations, um, considering all the, all the, all for all possible combinations of, of these values. And this is routinely used to generate large, um, large um, libraries of data. And the second type is, so once the scientist runs the, um, uh, the, the tensile model and when they specify uh, a region of interest, now they would be more, much more interested in uh, manually entering some of the, the values for the parameters and they just want to focus on, um, on that specific set of parameters um, related to a, a black hole simulation. So, um, so with that, this information, we then moved on to the ideation phase. Uh, my first step was to, I know you can't see anything here, but I'm going to zoom in a little bit, um, to map out the user journey. I just wanted to detail how users go about the workflow and what this would look like in the gateway environment. And so to zoom in, so here what we see is users first encountered the homepage. Uh, because you know they want it when they access the gateway, uh, they want especially for students they want to have um, uh, an informational web page, uh, pretty much, uh, for them to access to all this information. Um, and then new users, if they are if they are new users, they would sign up, providing you know all the necessary information. While returning users would log in with their credentials. And then, then they would be directed to their personalized dashboard from which they can navigate through various uh, functionalities and, and applications uh, within the, the platform. And then from here, users can then view um, active applications based on the credentials and the access they have. Um, and, and then select uh, one application for job submission. They can choose their submission method as well. Uh, they can either uh, use a Python script or they can continue with the web form, web submission, um, filling out the required details. And then from here, after submitting the job, users can then monitor uh, the progress of the job. Um, they can receive status updates and access the output once it is um, complete. Uh, and, and if they need, uh, if they want to engage with the output, they can also uh, open their um, uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, for further analysis and engage with these, these images um, in their output. So then um, with these insights in mind, we moved on to the design phase and began with the low fidelity wireframes to lay out all our ideas and what we want to really see uh, on this dashboard and on this platform. Um, I, as you can see here, I noted down everything such as a section dedicated for the application, sub application submissions, um, a section for the output analysis, um, and also uh, job status. They could see the recent experiments and also some of the other functionalities. But, Again, this was a low uh, fidelity uh, wireframe. So we received feedback on the low fidelity wireframe and then started uh, creating, producing a high fidelity prototype. We haven't done the usability testing on this uh, version yet, um, but we have the high fidelity version available now. So um, what I'm showing you here is also the ideal the, the ideal gateway we aim to to see at the end of this process, um, um, but we haven't implemented on the technical side yet, which Jun will will uh, will shortly talk about. So um, what you're seeing here is the landing page, uh, specifically developed designed to the to the needs of the EHD community. Um, it features the mission and objectives of the EHD product uh, project. Um, it kind of gives us a little bit of information about the core team members, uh, and also uh, we highlight the recent uh, media coverage. Users are, as you can see, are greeted with a clear call to action 
allowing them to easily uh, sign in, sign up for the, create an account uh, for the platform. Um, and also we provided key links um, for, for those who may want to access to documentation, uh, to publications, so that they can um, actually seamlessly navigate through the, uh, the platform and, and access the resources at their fingertips. Um, so the sign up process is pretty straightforward. I actually had a really nice uh, animated image of the black hole uh, uh, simulation here, uh, but I wasn't able to get it work on the PowerPoint. Uh, so it looks actually much cooler on the on the real website. Uh, but so as I said, this is the sign up process, and um, uh, they would just you know provide new users would provide uh, the necessary details, and then um, the uh, the already uh, users that already have. Um, accounts, they can uh, quickly um, uh, access the site. And then this is where they see the dashboard. So it is a personalized dashboard, uh, as I mentioned, based on the, the access the user have, uh, based on their credentials. Um, they can see first, um, this is again, the revised version of the, the low fidelity framework based on the user feedback we received throughout this process. They can um, start accessing the applications uh, for job submission. They can add new uh, new applications um, and also do other things like clicking on the links to see their most recent experiments um, that they are you know currently running uh, that the the running projects and 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 their their uh, status. So how did they go about submitting jobs right from their dashboard? So um, again, based on the application that they select, they would then begin the workflow. Um, and this would uh, immediately take them to the appropriate submission form. Um, as I mentioned to you, there are two different use cases within the EHD community. So we developed these, um, these forms uh, based on the feedback we received from them. Um, so they would see whichever form um, is, 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 the, um, is the analysis that they want to, uh, is the submission uh, that goes with, uh, with their intent. And then from here, um, once they complete the submission form, they can also validate um, the, the form will, uh, will give them the, uh, the information about their HD Condor queue settings so they can receive these information such as CPU hours uh, so that they can efficiently use some of these resources. Um, and once they actually click on the My Recent Experiment, um, on their dashboard. This will take them to a list of the recent experiments they submitted. And um, from there, if they click, um, each of these, um, each of them has actually hyperlink attached to them, they can see the status of their jobs. So they can see that, you know, 50, 55% of this job is completed and how much of it is still running and how much of that job is idle and so on. And then again, um, another feature in, in the, uh, on the uh, dashboard is we provide a lot of information uh, icons. So for those, especially students who may not be familiar with certain processes, they can quickly uh, click on the information icon and receive um, uh, the information that they need. So now I'm gonna turn it over to June to tell you more about the implementation part. Thank you. Uh, since we are running out of time, so I will not go through detail. Uh, the only uh, technical difficulty to implement uh, this one is basically our portal needs to connect with the OSG access point, but this access point is locked into behind a, a sense gateway. So you cannot directly uh, allow our uh, service API to talk with the uh, with OSG access point. The only thing is uh, it's uh, basically slow down things a little bit. Yeah, this was something very simple. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyone okay. wants to see the demo about this a little later? Yeah. We're, we're running out of time to actually show through this, but we're happy to show it. Okay. But you can go ahead and get it. It's just the uh, just the finish and talk. Well, I guess. Yeah. You want to say that? Oh, yeah. yeah. So we will we will show that demo to anyone who wants to see it directly at the end. Um, so just to wrap that up. Um, Cursor to there, to that machine, to that desktop, close that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. right. Okay. 
and then I should be able to move this down. Just to wrap things up, uh, what's left to do over the, the next uh, um, several months, we need to merge the front end work and the design that Essen created with the back end work and the communication with the access point uh, from the gateway uh, together to make that well, the, the uh, very appealing, uh, visually appealing website that, that Essen has uh, envisioned uh, into uh, reality. We have that framework and it's functional. We just need to put them together. Um, we need to do user testing and feedback uh, once this goes live. Um, the good news is that EHT is this fall preparing for a new uh, uh, data uh, collection phase. So we can then test this in uh, in the real world setting of new data collected can be, uh, uh, we can point people at this gateway. Um, then uh, of course we'd like to identify additional use cases and to uh, see this continuing story, we'll be at PERC in a few weeks and then at Gateways 2024 um, in October. So that we'll, we'll continue talking about this, but uh, um, we'll stop there and take any questions.